morning to Zechariah chapter 4. Zechariah, Zechariah chapter 4 verses 6. We've been studying the anointing in recent weeks. I don't get anything out of the last couple of weeks. Man, we're moving. Come on now, we're moving from, from natural levels to supernatural levels. Amen. It says here in Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6, it says um, in the latter part of this verse, it says it's not going to be by might and it's not going to be by power, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord. It's by the spirit of God that things that he has on his agenda are going to happen. It's by the spirit of the Lord. Whatever you're doing and trying to do in the natural, you will not do it. It's not by the natural strength of yours or your own ability or wisdom that you're going to get the job done. It's according to the anointing of God. Amen. So quit fighting in the natural and start winning in the supernatural. Amen. I'm going to say it again until someone gets it. Quit fighting in the natural and start winning in the supernatural and lean into the supernatural, uh, supernatural aid his spirit that is available to you. Amen. For it's going to be by his anointing. A amen. See, when we, um, when, when we try and do something without the anointing, it's very, very difficult. But when you lean in and tap into the anointing power of God, come on, God's ability, God's arsenal, God's might, it, it just makes everything easy. It just makes everything easy. But without the anointing, it's like trying to chew food with no teeth. But when you get the anointing, anyone tried? Oh, well, that's not even possible. I'm not even going to ask, has anyone tried to do that? Because that would reveal something about you. Um, so, <laughs> but anyhow, um, but when you get the anointing, <laughs> when you get the anointing, it's like you get teeth. This is why the devil hasn't got anything. The most the devil can do is gum you because he's been defanged. Come on, he's, he's toothless. He's been rendered inoperative, paralyzed. Come on up. But you are the one who've got, who's got the bite. You're the one who's got the annoyance. It's not something that we're trying to get, and I can't get into those references that we got into last, last week. But thank God we have the anointing. We've got the anointing of God. Amen. And so um, it's, important for us to, uh, it's important for us to lean into the anointing and recognize the anointing and the anointings. There's various different abilities, graces, plural. One of the graces is... is healing anointing. It says in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, how God anointed Jesus. Come on out. He went about doing good. How many of you can't even do anything good without the anointing or without the power of God? So you've got to be an expert if you want to be someone who does something good in life. Anybody? Well, you've got to learn how to tap into the anointing of God that's available and has been given unto you. Amen. Well, Jesus was anointed with the same power and same Holy Ghost that you are. And he went about doing good, healing. Well, he couldn't heal without the anointing. This is all found in Acts chapter 10, 38. So there's a healing anointing. And he used his authority over the devil and used the help of the Holy Spirit and used the power of God, which is the anointing of God. He said, he went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil. For God was hit with him, or in other words, wherever God is, his power is, wherever God is, his anointing is, and we've got to promise people. You might want to tell your neighbor, we've got a promise. Come on, tell them. You, we've got a promise. We have got a promise, and the promise is this. He will never leave you, and he will never forsake you. That anointing, 1 John chapter 2, verse 26, 27, I believe it is, it's an abiding anointing. Wherever you are, God is, because he lives in you, and wherever God is, his power is. For he is with you. And so if you want to take authority over the oppression, how many know that's how the devil works? He tries to oppress lives. If you want to smash that, stop that. Andre messaged me last night. I was encouraged because uh, he sent me a clip uh, where we were exhorting um, concerning the power that, that we have at our disposal and that can be released through a vehicle. And that vehicle is called prayer. In James chapter 5, verse 17, it says, it's the fervent prayers of a righteous person. I know righteous yes. avails much, makes tremendous power available. 
And then it gives us the example of the old time prophet who was a man who had a constitution like yours. Cody had a spirit, had a soul, had a physical body. Yet, come on now, yet when he prayed, he stopped the weather cycle and he started the weather cycle. So he, he, he had an ability, not in his own power or his own might, but through the power that he tapped into. This is an old covenant man. He wasn't even filled with the Holy Ghost because the day of Pentecost hadn't fully come yet. But you are filled with the power of God and the presence of God. Amen. But here's a man who starts stuff and stops things. And so we have the power to stop things and start things. And Jesus was anointed by the Holy Ghost and power. He went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil. He stopped the oppression. How many of you have got the ability to stop that? Whatever you've been oppressed with, whatever you've been challenged with, I'm telling you, if it's in your body, in your home, in your, in your street, come on, somebody. On this street, we have the power to stop it. But it's not with your power, your might is by the Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. So there's a healing anointing. But there's other graces, anointings, plural. One other anointing I want to focus on today is the anointing to increase. Woo! And I don't, I, I, I think there's so much, this has been so challenged. I mean, so challenged in this neck of the woods. But I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, do you know what? This preacher you're looking at is a preacher who quotes the Bible. So, so don't get at me, get, at, get, get mad with the one who gave these words. And we're going to read, we're going to read a whole bunch this morning. You ready? I believe it's time for us to get in the word of God. Amen. And find the truth and be, be completely settled on the truth. I think most hard, hard, hardships, and this would, um, this would probably, you know, challenge a lot of people, is a construct of people's inability or refusal to feed on the Word of God. I think most people's hardships are a result of people's refusal, people's neglect of feeding on the Word. So I told Andre, I said, hey, here's a whole bunch of scriptures to give to the media guys. And uh, <clears throat> I've got three pages. I don't know how many pages, how, how many of these scriptures we're going to get through, but we're going to get up through a bunch until our heart settles on this truth. Turn, turn to Psalms 133. Anyone glad you came to church this a.m., 10 a.m. service? You getting used to the 10 a.m. service, by the way? Anyone liking the 10 a.m. service? Anybody? It's not too early for you, huh? Praise the Lord. Not too late for you, is it? <laughs> Come on, there's certain environments. We were talking on Wednesday night. We had a time on Wednesday night dealing with the spirit of fear. Uh, you can go back and watch it on, uh, on Facebook stream. You can scroll down and find that, that, that broadcast. But we talked about various different environments are conducive for the power of God to, to move. Since we're talking about the anointing and anointings, uh, you could say that, that um, uh, the anointing is, is like God's electricity. And if you know anything about electricity, there is good conductors and there is bad conductors. And where there is a bad conductor, you can have a shortcut of power. Hearing me? You can go to certain services, you can go to certain environments, and, uh, and people are drawing. It's full of good conductors. And they're, they're coming hungry and thirsty. And man, the anointing of God, God's power, His anointing, His God's electricity is flowing. But then certain other places, you get to preaching, and it, like, it comes out of your heart, and it, it just it bounces off people, and it slaps you back in the face. <laughs> and that slap's telling you, just quit preaching right now. No one's actually receiving anything. And, and because it's shortcutting the power from getting to the place where it needs to get. But thank God this room is full of good, come on, conductors. Well, what is a good conductor? You may want to choose to be one. Um, <clears throat> in order to be one and choose to be one, you've got to know what one is. And that is somebody who's hungry and thirsty after these words. Someone who's leaning in. Come on now. Say, man, I'm going to take this. Hallelujah. I refuse to neglect the, the, the word of God. Well, this scripture tells us 
uh, of, a, of an environment that, that can be created through, through, uh, through unity um, that becomes conducive for the anointing to flow freely. It says in Psalms 133 verse 1, it says, How good and pleasant it is, how good and pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together in, in unity. It is like the precious oil. It's like the oil that is always is symbolic of the anointing upon the head, running down on the beard, the beard of Aaron, the priest. How many know we've got a new high priest? Jesus the Christ. That anointing still flows from Jesus the Christ. Christ means anointed one. Hallelujah. Well, that oil, that anointing, the same oil, the same anointing runs from him. It says running down on the edge of his garments, right? On the edge of his garments and then seeps in. Come on, somebody. So everyone kind of is, is, come on, even if you try to escape from the anointing, you can't. As a child of God. Amen. It will be everywhere. It will be around you. The, the difference is, the difference is, uh, whether or not you recognize it, the moment you recognize it is the moment you tap into its power, its electricity. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. It says, and it is like the Jew of Hermon descending upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord has commanded the blessings of life forevermore. Turn in your Bibles to Acts chapter 4. I'm going to try and read this from the, uh, from the, the, the Passion Translation here. One of, my, one, one of my favorite translations in recent, in recent weeks. This is Acts chapter 4, verse, uh, verses, um, let's see here, verses 4 onwards. This is the passage, you'll know it, where Peter and John are being uh, challenged. In fact, the Sanhedrin council are furious because they're teaching in the name of Jesus. How many know whenever you tap into the power of God, how many know all of God's power was was poured into the name of Jesus. And when you release the name of Jesus, you also release the power that is in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And so here they are releasing and releasing the power of God wherever they go. People are getting healed. People are getting set free. Oh, glory to God. Is that our responsibility too? You better believe it is. So you, we better start doing it. This is part of the Great Commission, not the Great Suggestion. He said, you go ahead and preach the gospel. Make disciples, lay hands on the sick, cast out devils. Come on, anyone, anyone know how to cast out devils? Come on now. We're not talking about blocking friends on Facebook. We're talking about, I just saw someone on the phone, you know. They're still on the phone, still trying to figure out how to block them. Maybe you're blocking me right now because I, because I saw, I see everything. I see those who are wide awake. I see those who are falling asleep. Praise the Lord. I see those who are on the phone. And I operate in a spirit of discernment. I can tell whether or not you'll turn into the Bible or turn into social media. <laughs> so beware. People message me, comment on photographs during the service time. I think, whoa. You couldn't come to church. Why too busy commenting on other people's photographs? Are you kidding me? <laughs> I'm going to say priorities. priorities. Here they are releasing the power of God through the name of Jesus. People, people are always going to get furious when you operate in the anointing of God. The moment you start operating in the power of God, you better believe there will be a protest. And the protest will be birthed and will come from the hypocrites. Because your, your radical living and your, your out there believing will challenge people's lethargy. And it makes them uncomfortable so they'll try and argue what you're doing is not right. Because they feel convicted. We're not here to show anyone off. Or you know, prove that we're right and we're, we're the bee's knees and we're doing what we, what, what we should be doing. And you know, woe is you. For not doing it. No, 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 no. We're here to advance the kingdom of God. And you can't do it without the power, power. And Peter and John, you can see him doing it with the power of God. With the annoying power of God. The council didn't like it. They challenged them. They, th they threatened them. They brought them before the, 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 the council and trialed them for doing what the Bible refers in the, in the, in the 
the Passion Translation in verse 9, it says, for doing an act of kindness and healing, healing a, a frail, crippled man. You put us on trial for healing a frail, crippled man? Come on, put it in perspective. How many know religion never makes sense? But when you operate in the power of God, they'll be good, like Jesus operated in the power of God and went about doing good. They'll always be good. And here we see, um, they pipe up in verse 11, I'm reading from the Passion. It says, this Jesus is the stone that you, the builders, have rejected, and now he has become the cornerstone. There is no one else who has the power to save us, for there is only one name to whom God has given authority by which we must experience salvation, the name of Jesus. Now the council, they were astonished by their boldness. And it says that in the very next verse, they, they witnessed the bold courage of Peter and John, especially when they discovered they were just ordinary men who had never had religious training. Sometimes religious training can, can be the very thing that prevents you from stepping out. Yes. Come on, forget religious training. Yes. We need life mastering training. Amen. We need power training. <laughs> Not the type of power training you're talking about. We're talking about operating in the power of God. Learning how to release the power of God. Yes. You've, you've got to realize you've got it before you can even think about knowing how to release it. But if you didn't know you've got it today, I'm telling you, you have. You have it. These guys operated in it. Hallelujah. Then they began to understand the effect of Jesus and the effect that Jesus had on them simply by spending time with him. When you spend time with Jesus, well, who's Jesus? The anointed one. You better believe that you'll begin to, to see the operation and the power and the anointing of God in your life in a greater degree than ever before. Well, how can I spend time with Jesus? He's already ascended. Well, he is the word. And he'll jump right off the page and he'll get to speaking to you. Remember the centurion in, in, in Matthew chapter 8? He, 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 he said, uh, Jesus said to the man, he said, well, let me come to your house and, and, uh, and I'll, I'll, heal, I'll heal him. And the centurion said, no, you don't need to come to my house. Speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. Amen. Speak the word only. In other words, uh, your spoken word is just as powerful as a personal visitation of Jesus himself. So when you were, let the word of God come on to be spoken from a heart, that believes it, it is like a personal visitation. People crying out for a visitation, a visitation all the time. Just get the word of God in your heart and then connect your speaker to your, to your believer and speak the word of God and you will see Jesus walk straight in the room. You might not see him with your physical eyes, but you'll experience the anointing and it'll be the same as it was for Peter and John. People will see it. They will experience the reality that you have spent time with Jesus. They'll say, man, the effects of spending time in the Word, the effects of prayer, the effects of being with Jesus is astounding. It's astonishing. It caused them to marvel. Whew. Man, are you challenged by this? I am. Standing there with them was the healed man, and there was nothing. Thing further they could say. Come on, we silence the enemy. The accuser of the brethren. They'll, they'll be lost for words. Come on now. So they order them to leave the room while they discuss the matter among themselves. And they, they, they couldn't deny. Said, you know, these guys have performed a noble sign and wonder. We can't deny that fact. But to prevent this, they called it propaganda from spreading any further. Among the people, let's threaten them severely and warn them to never speak to anyone in this name again. They brought them back to the council, it says. I'm, I'm skipping a few things here. Uh, and um, and uh, verses 19, it says, but Peter and John replied, you can judge for yourselves. Is it better to listen to you or to God? What are you going to listen to? 
This is key to operating in the power and the anointing of God. Who are you listening to? You're listening to your feelings, listening to, to the naysayers, listening to popular opinion, personal preference. Who are you listening to? That's actually going to dictate the, me dictate the measure of power you actually operate in. Come on, money will try and be your master. Money will try and control you. You can't do this. You can't do that. But Jesus says, you can't serve money and mammon, God and mammon. You've got to be, a, you got to be a, a servant to one or the other, but you can't serve both. It's impossible. In other words, Jesus wants to be your Lord, but so does money. But what are you listening to? Are you going to listen to that or are you going to listen to God? Are you going to listen to the, uh, the, the challenge of people who don't like you stepping out and believing big and bold? Come on, somebody. Or are you going to listen to your Savior? Are you going to listen to Jesus the Christ? Hallelujah. Well, we know what they did. It's impossible for us, he said. It's impossible, verse 20. It's impossible for us to stop speaking about all the things we have seen and done. Not unlikely. It's impossible. Why? I'm a believer. Believers speak. <laughs> Believers testify. Hallelujah. So, anyway, moving on here. Oh, glory to God. I'm just trying to, trying to see. In verse 23, as soon as they were released from custody, Peter and John went to the other, other believers and explained all that had happened with the high priests and the elders. When the believers heard their report, they raised their voices in unity and prayed, Lord, Yahweh, you are the Lord of all. No one will lord themselves over us. In other words, you create the, the universe. You create the earth. You create the sky, the sea, and everything that is in them. And you spoke by the Holy Spirit through your servant David, our forefather, saying, How dare the nations plan a rebellion, ranting and raging against the Lord Most High. Their foolish plots are futile. Woo! Look at how the kings of the earth take their stand with the rulers scheming and conspiring together against God and his anointed Messiah. Against the anointing. Transpiring against the healing anointing. Against the corporate anointing. Against the believer's anointing. Come on, against the ministerial anointing. Come on, people make false stuff up about the ministers. What, what, what's the agenda? To try and shut their voice up. People try and underestimate the power of this. Coming together, the corporate anointing. People try and underestimate, devalue the in Christ realities. In anointing realities. Come on, somebody. In Christ, in anointing. Christ means anointed. You can't do that. What, who do you think you are believing like that? Who do you think you are saying, I'm going to, uh, uh, the God in me is going to heal you? When I say your sin has to listen to my voice, who do you think you are? There's a spirit on the planet right now called the spirit of the Antichrist spirit. First John chapter 2, verse 18 talks about the Antichrist spirit is on the planet right now. And what is it doing? It has an agenda. But its plans are, are, are being interrupted by believers who take their stand. I said their plan is being interrupted by believers who are going to take their stand. Like Peter and John took their stand and said, it's impossible for me to shut up. It's impossible for me not to do the work of Christ. Who, who, who do you think I am? Am I, going to, am I going to stand before you when I leave this planet? Who do you think I am? Am I going to give you an account of my life? Come on, I have a Lord. I have a Savior. I have Jesus. He is my Savior. He is my Lord. He's the one who I'm going to give an account of every word I say and everything I do. Not you. Not anyone else. Not money. Not my wife. Not my best friends. Not my parents. God, I believe in honoring my parents and listening to them and honoring, honoring my wife and listening to her, honoring your pastor. But you're not going to stand before me. You're going to stand before the king. And you'll have to give a detailed account 
of what you did or what you didn't do that you should have done. But they, they, they said, never do it. And if, if, if I did, they said, I, 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 I'm going to be killed. Oh, well, that, that, that settles everything then. Oh, you know, when I said fear not, I, I didn't mean don't fear death. Oh, no, that's something that you can fear. Paul said this. Now, your flesh will fear death. But you've got to override that. Come on, somebody. I'm not even getting to the first thing I want to say this morning. And it's already time for me to close our books and bless you and say, hey, see you later. See you next week. Oh, man. I was in a meeting last, last week. And almost every single meeting, you know, well, every meeting was over four hours. Every single meeting. Uh, two nights I was there. And then three nights I was there. And it went from, from uh, started in the evening at seven and went over into the next day. And I didn't feel it. And neither did anyone else. Because when you're hungry. Come on, when you're hungry. Now, I understand we're a family church, you know. And we endeavor to try and f- finish on a good time. But, but all of this. You know, us have an opinion of when the meeting should finish. Come on, somebody. Man, it's gone so quiet right now. Why, why? It's like you go into the throne room of heaven saying, okay, you've got me for 45 minutes, but that's it. If you've got anything more to say, I don't want to hear it. So, Jesus, hurry up and say it. I give you 30 minutes, speak to me, but as soon as 30 minutes, I'm, I'm, that's it. I'm not listening. I'm checking out. I'm gone. And here's the deal. Here's the deal. No, honestly, I'm serious. Now, I'm serious. Now, we are a family church. I've got kids. You know, I, I bring my, my, my children to this church too. Do you know I attend this church too? I actually also attend this church. I choose to bring my family here, you know. And I'm a family man. And I like to eat on a Sunday afternoon. Believe you me, I like to eat. Because usually I don't, I don't eat before I preach, so... So, like, I can hear sounds up here. You can't hear them there, but I can hear them here <laughs> when, when I'm preaching. And so my flesh is saying, quit now, quit now. You know, who do you think you are preaching this long? <laughs> but the Holy Spirit, if he doesn't give me a release, I can't say, Holy Ghost, you're done. See you next week. <laughs> and here's the deal. Every service, let me just be a pastor for a moment. Every service, there's, there's different people. And different, it's like a doctor, right? You have to work with the patient until they get it. You know, when you're doing therapy with them, it's, it's not like, well, this is going to take 10, the textbook says it's going to take 30 minutes. That's it. Oh, 30 minutes are over. You're out of it. No, no, you work with them until the operation, it, you know, it says the operation is going to take an hour. Oh, gosh, it's an hour. Let's just quit the operation. No, no, no. I mean, there's, there's still things hanging out in the body. <laughs> It's like, what do we want? Do we want the Holy Spirit to come right in and me- clean out all our mess? Or do we just want to go through one of those drive throughs You know, with the floppy, floppy cleaning cloths. <laughs> but they never get right in between the alloys, do they? But the Holy Spirit wants to get right down deep. Come on now, and deal with some. Why are you so quiet? Why are you getting so quiet? This, I'm, I'm a bit concerned. Uh, that's not for me to say that, you know, this meeting's going to go on until Monday. Um, but <laughs> some people get worried. What, what does this mean now? I mean, what are, you, what are you actually saying now? All right, let's just move on here. The rule is scheming and conspiring together against God and his anointed Messiah. How dare they? Come on, how dare they? Verse 28 says, they did to him all that... Your purpose and will had determined according to the destiny you had marked out for him. So now, Lord, listen. Listen, listen, Lord, listen to their threats to harm us. Empower us as your servants to speak the word of God freely and courageously. Stretch out your hand of power through us to heal and to move in signs and wonders by the name of your holy servant, Jesus. At that moment, the earth shook beneath them, causing the building... 
They were in to tremble. Each one of them was filled with the Holy Spirit. And they proclaimed the word of God with unrestrained boldness. Someone say unrestrained boldness. All the believers were in one mind and heart. Selfishness. And this is what I'm trying to get to. Notice the coupling. And this is what happened. If you and I want to move of the Spirit. And if you want to be, if you want to be a part of the move of the Holy Ghost. There's got to be unity. There's got, to be, uh, there's got to be one mind and one heart. We've read that. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were in one place, in one heart, in one accord, and it took them 10 days to get there, but they finally got there. It took them 10 days, and when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they came to that place of unity. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And then they started doing something with the infilling. Hallelujah. So, 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 come on, if we have a 10-day ten, ten meeting, we better get something. And after the 10-day meeting, we better get out of here and do something and see people added to the church. Thousands of people were added to the church. But notice, Pentecost, when you examine Pentecost, yes, everyone was filled, but not everyone was filled until everyone was in one accord. This is why if you can't hook up to the vision of this church and what we see and what we're about, then you better find a place. I'm serious. You know, I'm, that's my prayer for every single one of you, to find a place that you can hook up to and support and get behind and pray for and run with, with all of your strength. Because God has designed each and every one of us to be in one accord. But he cannot function and move where there is any kind of disunity or division. He doesn't work in that area at all. He cannot, does not operate in those environments and realms. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. See, when we, when we start collaborating with one another, I've said this uh, over the last several weeks, that you know one will put 1,000, but two will put 10,000 to flight. When we start working together, collaborating together in one accord, I'm telling you, you know, we step right into not multiplication, not addition, excuse me. Oh, we got, we got two more people. Okay, let's just add them to who was present. No, no, no. We, we start operating in multiplication, not addition. One can put 1,000. Two can put 2,000. What? 10,000? What's the 2,000, right? What? Ten, you said 10,000? What school did you go to? You're just like Peter and John, un, un, untrained. See, this is an upside down kingdom. I don't know, I picked on your husband a few weeks ago. Uh, it looks like you've eaten more protein now, so that's good. <laughs> well done for cooking him whatever he needed. You know, he did a fab, fab job. But notice that 1,000 for one, <laughs> two, ought to be 2,000. Just watch the message, you'll understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> but two can put 10,000 when we collaborate together. Here's the thing, I really believe that, and the Spirit of the Lord uh, told me, I, I, we were going to do a, a, a building campaign uh, over a year ago now. And the Holy Spirit just pulled the reins on it and said, no, 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 you can't do it. Because the weight of it will be, will suddenly go into the natural and be on the shoulders of those who are willing to sow. But if we just all tithe, <laughs> and bring what is his. There will never have to be a big building campaign. Just bring what is his. Here's the deal. I'll, I'll, um, I, I'm not, I can't even get into my message right now. I'm, I'm literally just, you know, page one. I, I, I can't even try. When we bring what is his, we haven't even sown yet. There's been no sowing. We, we just have now the land, the lease of the land to sow. So when we bring what is his, we're not giving anything that is ours. We're just bringing what is his. This is why in the Bible it never says, you know, uh, give the tithe. It says, no, bring the tithe. He says, the tithe is mine. And that's between you and the Lord. Well, that's old covenant. Well, you know, really, um, in the New Testament, if we're going to get technical about it, it's all his. 
because you died in the new covenant. So really, you really have nothing. You identify yourself with him. But if you don't bring, your, bring what is his, you haven't even sown. You, you've, just, you've just got now liberty to sow. So he says, okay, bring what is mine. Okay, there's the door that's, that's open now for the field of my, of my kingdom for you to sow in. So the moment you start now giving offerings is the moment you now put seed in the ground in his kingdom, which has an eternal significance. Whew, we're going to have to get in this next week. Hallelujah. How did I get onto that? Because it says here in Acts chapter 4, verses, verses 31, unrestrained boldness, oh glory to God. Verse 32, and all the believers were, were one in mind and heart. Selfishness was not a part of their community. Selfishness was not a part of their community. For they shared everything they had with one another. The apostles gave powerful testaments about the resurrection of the Lord Christ. And, and great measures, great measures... Of grace, which is anointing, great measures of anointed, anointing rested upon them all. Some who owned houses or land sold them and brought the proceeds before the apostles to distribute to those without. Notice this. Not a single person. Now, if you've heard me preach over the last few weeks, you know why this is significant. Not a single person among them was needy. Just like the children of Israel brought out of captivity. Hallelujah. Brought out with silver and gold. And not a single one among them was feeble. That is what God wants for us. What is it going to take? Oh, it's going to take unity. I really believe it's not the... It's not the um, uh, it's not the amounts that we do, but when we say corporately, we're going to do what God you will us to do. We're going to bring what is yours into your storehouse, and then we're going to we're going to get into the field and we're going to start sowing. And when we start sowing, then we'll have we'll have confidence knowing that we can have a harvest. But if you don't sow anything, you can't expect to receive anything back or produce anything which completely violates the Genesis mandate for you to be fruitful. Hallelujah. Now, I haven't got time to get into this. Man, I just, well, I've got something else coming up later on too. Oh, praise the Lord. I'm telling you. So we'll say great grace. grace. Unrestrained boldness. Great unity. And there was no selfish, selfishness. Well, what did I almost say? Sulkiness? There was none of that either. Praise the Lord. But there was no selfishness in their community. And there was great anointing, great grace to increase upon every single one of them. Every single one of them. You know, he says in, in Psalms 110 verse 3 that, that in the day of his power, people will freely be, and they'll be willing to give. Are we in the day of his power? You better believe we are in the day of his power where the Holy Ghost is being poured out. Come on now, this is, this is the other side of Pentecost. Come on now, and Pentecost can be enjoyed every single day. If you haven't been filled with the Holy Ghost, you can be right here, right now. Amen. But we are a full church, fully functioning, full of the power, full of love for one another. No selfishness amongst us. Amen. No one lacking a thing. No one lacking anything. It is impossible to put God first and then come last. It's impossible. It can't even happen. Seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. And everything that the world chase after will be simply added to you by his great grace towards you. Woo! Glory to God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. 